But the bigger issues at stake are long-term economic competitiveness, which the senator from New Mexico has talked about, and also the threats that our military experts see to our nation and global security. I was wondering if you for a moment would, would comment on that. On the point that the senator from New Jersey makes about uh, economic power being the foundation for military power and the power of persuasion around the globe, uh, you really don't have to look any further than back to the decline and fall of the Soviet Union, which is widely viewed as being based on a country that spent so much on its military without an underlying economic engine powerful enough to support it that it finally fell in. So when we are looking out at a clean energy market that's been estimated to be a $6 trillion market, the idea that it's in America's interests to cede that entire market to the Chinese, to let them be the manufacturers, to trust that we'll be fine if they're manufacturing solar and wind and all of the new battery technologies and we're just consumers of that, is crazy. That economic weakness has national security overtones. In addition, as the uh, distinguished senator from New Jersey pointed out, in addition to Admiral Locklear and the distinguished senator from Hawaii mentioned Admiral Locklear as well, but he's not alone. Secretary Mabus, the Secretary of the Navy, has pointed out the same thing. We are at risk from global warming from a national security perspective. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are on record about the national security consequences of climate change to our country. Uh, as the Senator from New Mexico knows from his time on the Intelligence Committee, there are NIEs, National Intelligence Estimates, that speak to the danger that climate change presents for America, for our national security interests, when it happens in other lands. And the Defense Quadrennial Review, which is the key document that drives our defense policy, has over and over again emphasized climate change as a national security risk, as a liability for our country. So yes, it is very, very important that we deal with this. I, was, I had a uh, conversation with Henry Kissinger the other day, and he was speaking generally, and he, made an, he used an interesting phrase. He said that the big upheavals and revolutions in the world have always come from a confluence of resentments. A confluence of resentments. So I'd add to the immediate risks of climate change causing upheaval and causing military problems that threaten our national security interests, the larger problem that America stands for something in this world. And we all benefit because America stands for something in this world and the rest of the world knows it. If we come to the point where around the world people are seeing in their homes, in their lives, in their villages, in their hamlets, on their shores, the effects of climate change, and it's bad for them, the fish they used to catch aren't there, the crop they used to grow won't grow any longer, the river they used to irrigate isn't running as strong any longer, and their lives have been hurt as a result of that, and they look around, what greater resentment could there be than a resentment of the country that knew this was coming, that said it was a leadership nation, and that did nothing about it when it knew. Now there's a confluence of resentments around the world, and that too creates a national security risk for our country.